Jonathan Williams back again from the Bricks and Mortar podcast. The last couple of shows, what we've been doing is we've been going through the application procedure for a mortgage. So what I've been telling you about is we go through the affordability check, we go through the uh, decision and principle, and now we're on to talking about the, a- the actual application. So what is the application and what do you need? The most important thing for you to know is that you need to get all of the ducks in a row, okay? And what I mean by that is you need to make sure that you've got all your documentation, all of your information ready to send off to the broker. Because what the broker's trying to do is the broker's trying to package the whole thing together so that he shoves it out to the lender, the underwriters will have a look at the application and then tick off all of their specification. So a good broker will be able to second guess what the underwriter is looking for. And that's what we do at Begley Brown. So what do you need? I'll tell you what they're gonna look at. They'll look at an employer's reference. So do you see that job that you told them that you had and how much money you earned? It better be correct because what will happen is that the bank is probably the bank of building side. The first thing they're going to do is write off to your employer and actually they'll be asking how much money you earn. So for goodness sake, make sure you get that right. Where do you stay? Of course, you know where you stay, but the bank want to know where you stay. And I tell you what, they also want to know for how long you've been staying in that property. They'll also want to know you're on the electoral roll. So for goodness sake, tick the box and make sure you cast your vote. Next thing you want to know is bank statements. We talked about earlier about affordability and the decision and principle, and we talked about income and expenditure. The expenditure, what they will do, that's to say what the bank will do, is the bank will look at your expenditure and they will tick off the expenditure as they see it coming through in your bank statement. So for again, it's all about transparency. There's no hiding place as far as the mortgage application is concerned. And if you've missed something out in the decision and principle, by the time it goes to application, it may just be too late. So for goodness sake, when your broker asks you, tell the truth, don't miss anything out. So that's the employer's reference that's where do, you, where do you stay, the bank statement, the valuation. You're buying a property, you're remortgaging your own property. Of course the bank are wanting to know what kind of property you're going to be staying in. And what they'll look at is a valuation. Now sometimes they'll do their own valuation, but if you're buying a property and that valuation has been done by a surveyor that is on the panel of the bank, then as long as it's within three months, then you shouldn't have any problem about getting another valuation because the bank should really accept that valuation which has been carried out as long as it's within three months and as long as that surveyor is on the panel. So you've done your application, it's fired off, but what happens if you're a bit of an oldie and you need to go into retirement and you need to have an income in retirement. So you need to make sure that you give your broker your entire, your, your retirement income. So it's pension calculations. That's a big, big thing these days. With so many people now looking to borrow into retirement, you need to make sure that all the ducks are stacked up in a row and that you've got the information there so that your broker is second guessing what the underwriters are going to be asking for. One other speciality is buy to let. The other piece of information when you're doing a buy to let mortgage, what you will be needing to demonstrate to the Bank of Building Society is that you've got rent coming in. So again, you'll probably need to send them the lease. You need to send them the AT5 form. Again, if you're playing the game of the buy to let, make sure you do it properly. And if you don't know what you're doing, for goodness sake, get somebody instructed who knows what they're doing. Get a letting agent. It's, it's just, it's nonsensical 
that if you are going down the buy to let route and you don't know what you're doing, get an agent to help you out. So we've talked about what you need there. What about packaging it? You need to make sure, and this is what we'll do, if you come to us and organise your mortgage, what we'll do is we'll second guess what the underwriter is looking for. And we've got enough experience to know what this the underwriter is looking for. So we'll package the, the thing up properly. We'll second guess what the underwriter is going to look for. And hopefully what should happen is that the thing should arrive at the Bank of Building Society's desk and it should be boom, 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 all ticked off and you should get your offer in a week or so. But if it's not packaged up, if you haven't given all the correct documentation to your broker, then you're in a world of pain. So sort it out. Get the information to the broker. So once that's all done, the offer gets fired out. You, as the client, get a copy of the offer. The solicitor gets a copy of the offer and the broker gets a copy of the offer. And off you go, conclude your missives. And within a couple of days, a couple of weeks, whatever, you should have your keys. That's Jonathan Williams, Bricks and Mortar Podcast. It's a sideways look at property.